Hello, hello everyone. GMGM. Welcome to Web3 Magic Podcast. Here I talk with builders of some of the most interesting projects across Web3 space. Interesting by the use case, not by the price of a token. So let's warm up with music and jump. Let's jump into today's episode. Hello everyone. I'm back and today I'm back with Denise. I tend to say this S, but you know, I see it's with Z, uh, but I hope it's not uh, an insult to say this S. Um, and Denise is a founder of a very interesting project, which, you know, I started using just recently, which is called Alpha Day. And it's like your crypto dashboard for everything. Um, you know, calendar with information, widgets. Well, he will tell us all about it, but I just found it pretty cool. And uh, I was surprised I didn't bump into it earlier. So, Dennis, welcome. Uh, thank you so much. And yes, you can call me Dennis. You can call me Dennis as well. It's like an international name. Um, there's a few different options there. And thank you for having me on the show. I think we met a few months ago in Istanbul and uh, at a very nice, uh, interesting yep. location. Had great food and had great chat about uh, crypto about uh, global markets so it's great to have the second opportunity to talk to you again true true we met in uh, dev connect in istanbul and uh, luckily we bumped each into each other on the crypto nomads dinner um, which was great um, i still remember how full i was when i was leaving that place uh, so yeah a lot of uh, too much food Mezes, like 10 different things. Um, but yeah, we had a good time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so look, uh, let's jump right, right into it. So I always ask my guests, um, how, you know, did you get to crypto to showcase that, you know, almost everybody in crypto is actually a normal person and that there is a journey which makes sense. Uh, so what was your, you know, journey to crypto and to Alpha Day? Yeah, so I got into crypto in 2016, and since then it's been life changing. But what triggered it all was, uh, like, if you're familiar with Reddit, where it's so many different discussions happening, sure. it's like a social. So there was a thread called "Explain to me like I'm five, Ethereum, the smart contract, like Turing complete blockchain platform." And I had no idea about blockchains. I'd heard of Bitcoin, but ignored it. But when I came across this concept of being able to write these smart contracts and deploy them on a decentralized computer where anyone can run it anywhere around the world without asking permission, with no centralized party, that just blew my mind. And that was like going down the rabbit hole. We'll talk about that rabbit hole. And for me, it was coming across Ethereum, finding it incredible. I came from a finance background. So I knew how the global markets worked. I knew about the inefficiencies. Okay. So once I came across Ethereum and then it was um, going into Bitcoin, doing my master's in digital currency and learning about the philosophy of like the core technology, the value add, all the concepts around blockchain technology. And yes, I mean, I've worked in different projects. And a few years ago, I started Alpha Day, kind of based on the pain and the learnings of what I've gone through since 2016. Okay, so it kind of begs the follow-up question. Did you start off a day as a dashboard for your trading or was there a different motive? So the motive was being almost obsessed with crypto in that you open your computer, you go on Twitter, you're consuming crypto information. You're learning about new projects. You start listening to podcasts. You're spending more and more hours uh, kind of engrossed in this. And I travel around the world and I realize it's not just me. There's like thousands of us, if not millions of crypto enthusiasts. But the space has grown mm -hmm. so much over the last five, 10 years. The surface area is so much that it's almost impossible to keep up to date with what's happening in crypto. And that's why we made Alpha Day to solve that problem of so much information, so many different kinds of information. We wanted to have one experience where all the information important to you is coming and you can kind of build it into this experience that fits your own daily crypto consumption habits. Got it. Got it. Uh, okay. So now, now probably is a 
is a good time to just briefly say what Alpha Day is and what it does for you. Yes. So in very simple terms, Alpha Day is a dashboard with hundreds of different services and data points and content and, pro and podcast and rich media that you can drag and drop and build a dashboard that has exactly what you would have in 10 different browser tabs. So some people might have like a charts open on their daily uh, lives on a daily basis and then have uh, like a podcast feed open. They might have Reddit, Twitter open, CoinMarketCap, whatever it is, instead of having it in 10 different tabs and having to jump through one and the other all the time, Alpha Day is a place where you can design, we like what we have is this concept of widgets where you can drag and drop your wallet widget with your portfolio. You can drag and drop news. You can drag and drop a chat link to your favorite Discord uh, channels. And you build something that when you open it instantly, wow, this is like the information I want. And here's an easy way to consume that information. Okay, that sounds awesome. So, so I hear that, you know, I can... Um have my wallet portfolio visible there is a discord integration are there is there a telegram integration or where else are the big chats happening signal maybe yeah so telegram is on our roadmap so far we brought in twitter lens uh, discord and a few other social media channels we also have a dedicated chat box okay. so anyone from alpha day like uh, anyone who visits the channel can use it but we're just constantly adding more and more. We keep getting different suggestions from the community. You mentioned Telegram. We immediately say, oh, okay, this is interesting. This can be done. And we have a huge backlog of new widgets that we're releasing in the next year. Hmm. Uh, so of particular interest to me would be, do you guys have Farcaster integration or Noster? Farcaster, we are working on it. I think I think we actually even might okay. have or we're testing it. There is something happening because the guys asked me to go register and create subdomains for the Alpha Day like ETH uh, account so that we can start using it and integrating it. So I think we're working on it. Cool. Good, good. I honestly I like it a lot. I I hope to get uh, Dan from Farcast on a podcast sometime this year, but because it. Um, I, you know, so ignoring the tech, it's basically like they say sufficiently decentralized social network. It doesn't really matter. Um, what matters is that there, are, there is a community which feels small, but it's big enough to have interesting conversation without all the, you know, s smoke and mirrors of Twitter <laughs> crypto bubble or NFT bubble. So that, that's why I like it a lot. Um, and I am curious, you know, to see where it goes as more people join, because it's kind of inevitable that, uh, you get the same kind of problems, which X has now, uh, I but, mean, okay. Okay. That sounds great. Um, to do a small step back, <clears throat> you mentioned that you were involved with some other projects before you started Alpha Day. Do you want to mention some of them? Are you still involved or you are fully, you know, Alpha Day guy now? I'm fully Alpha Day, but, well, two things. There is something else I'm doing as well. But the I started at Kyber Network, which was the first kind of decentralized exchange after Ether Delta that was based on, like, automated market making and, like, this kind of new architecture, even before uh, Uniswap. And that was released mm. in early 2018. And at some point it was a top DEX for quite a while. And it's still around. Um, mm -hmm. It's back to different blockchains. So I was there for a while. And I'm also actually a venture partner, IOSG uh, Ventures, who've been involved in the crypto space and the Web3 and infrastructure space for many years now. We're one of the earliest investors in Polkadot and many other uh, important Neat. and smart contract platforms. Okay, cool. So. One future episode we can dedicate to investing in the Web3. Yeah. Well, for, for me, that's easy. Just invest in Ethereum, <laughs> personally. <But> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, that's uh, my simplified thesis as well, honestly. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's not get into financial advice. 
Um, so uh, can I ask how big is the Alpha Day team? And probably, you know, for people who don't know, Alpha Day is free, right? Yes. So Alpha Day is free. Um, I think the only thing you would pay is we actually introduced the Uniswap swap widget as in Alpha Day. So you don't even have to go to another exchange. Mm -hmm. Right from Alpha Day, you can swap your tokens just by connecting. And there we take a 0.1% uh, fee. But we're also working on the system mm -hmm. where if you use the platform, you get like some kind of achievement NFT, and then the trading fees uh, aren't applied. Um, yeah, apart from that, we're free. And we are a team of 10 uh, people spread all around the world working on this uh, full time. Cool. Um, so because we are, you know, we, we are recording this uh, early 2024. Mm -hmm. So I think the good two follow-up questions are, what were the best achievements of 2023 for Alpha Day? And then the follow-up will be okay. You know, what, what's coming up in 2024? Yeah. So we launched Alpha Day in August of 2022. So let's say it was halfway towards the end of the previous year. So last year was our first full time on the market. And for us, mm -hmm. like the feedback we received from people that say, oh, this simplifies my life and people that have called it the browser tap killer and people that have said, I love it, but can you add in this and that? Like just living that experience has been amazing. But other highlights include for me showing this to big projects like Aave, like Avalanche, like Zcash and saying, what do you guys think of Alpha Day for your own communities? And then them saying, yeah, this is amazing and giving us grants, being involved and building uh, kind of dashboards for 10, 15 really high quality uh, projects. I mean, that's been another achievement. And lastly, just the team's output in terms of widgets, pushing out all those uh, Discord and Lens widgets and so many different widgets, I think is another highlight for us in 2023. Amazing. I didn't realize you guys were so new. I thought I'm just, you know, behind the trend <laughs> that I didn't know about you, but no, um, no, we're okay. Still... So, so you are, so I'm, I'm not that late. You are early. Um, I, I just pulled it up because I like the yellow. I, the, everybody who knows me knows I like colors. So I was <laughs> pleasantly uh, surprised by the, by the color choices. Um, and so what's the, like a two or three big milestones you guys have planned for 2024? So the biggest one is releasing a, a mobile app on the Android and iOS stores. And when I first built Alpha Day, I was always like thinking of this as a web, like kind of full PC experience. But I guess I'm a boomer because 50% of users use Alpha Day from mobile. And that was something we had deprioritized really? and we hadn't touched anything. It was actually a terrible experience. So now that we saw so much traffic coming from there, it was inevitable that we'd have to go and design it uh, properly um, for the mobile experience. I think that's our number one kind of milestone. And then the second one is actually introducing either like an NFT system or a points or some kind of token system to not gamify it, but make it more interactive so that you are rewarded for using the platform and it kind of helps grow the usage, kind of creates this community and we're brainstorming different ideas. Like we're saying, since we are in the programmable money space, right? Crypto, like you have DeFi, you have NFT. We have so many different tools. Let's use the tools and kind of try and come up with some innovative way to take advantage of that, to implement it. And so that's what we're working on as well for this year. Okay. That sounds like a couple of interesting developments. Um, I can definitely see the mobile thing being a big big deal for a lot of people probably also for me because um i don't know if you have it but i i have that feeling that you know if i am sitting at my computer i'm supposed to do something serious uh and when i'm just walking around <laughs> laying on a couch and i take my mobile into hand i can 
kind of do the same type of work, but it doesn't feel like work. <laughs> so Alpha Day would fit into this perfectly. Now that you have launched the podcast widget, it would be like a double plus. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. Also, a cool idea we have for the mobile is having what we call the super feed. So let's say you have your portfolio and you have 10 different tokens in it. We will have this super feed related to the 10 tokens you hold, but imagine seeing the latest podcast for what you follow, the latest news alerts. If something has missed an audit, like a news flash, or like different contextual information from Discord, from a hundred different sources of what's relevant to you in one super feed. I think that hasn't been done before, and that's going to be an amazing feature for the mobile apps. Yeah, that, well, that sounds awesome because I... I think there were some attempts to like centralized communication around the project or around selected projects. So you wouldn't have to go to like thousand discords and, and gather your updates. Um, but I haven't found any of that really working that well, yeah. probably partly because it's kind of fragmented anyway. So, you know, if you centralize the discord communication, you still miss the Twitter and all the other channels. And you miss the price on from the open COL or blur. Um, yeah. So you are still missing a lot of data points, which you would probably want. And that basically just keeps you clicking across different tabs all the time. What's, what's your main source of information to stay up to date with uh, crypto? So I will probably shoot myself in to lag, but I will say... It's uh, Binance charts um, mm -hmm. and um, and trading graphs and Twitter. Yeah. So I do I do subscribe to Market Watch and um, Bloomberg and other things. So I I don't read them because of crypto. I read them because of you know finance and and uh, market information in general. Um, but I. Because there are different data points, I kind of have easy way to validate whether something which I read on Twitter and looks like an interesting information is actually true. Because if it is, it was already mentioned somewhere on Bloomberg or other places. And so it's just like confirmation that it's, it's real. Um, and as I mentioned before we started recording, I'm, I'm not any active trader in crypto. So for me, it's more like, to catch interesting projects when they start. So, you know, I could meet interesting people. I could see interesting tech. I could try it. Uh, it's not that much about like farming for airdrops or buying and selling shit coins. Um, so I think my life is easier from that perspective than others. Yeah. I think like the beauty What's of your world? main source of information um, a new website called Alpha Day is my main source. But I mean, joking aside, <laughs> before it used to be Twitter, and I would <clears throat> hope that I get lucky and find the information that's important to me. Uh, it's Twitter, and then it would be Reddit, it would be private Telegram groups, uh, it would be different things. And like, well, the idea behind Alpha Day is if you are interested in only like shitcoins, as you call them. Um, then you can have like a shitcoin filter, <laughs> let's say, and you can have like widgets that kind of highlight alpha related to what's happening in that. But then on the other hand, you don't care about that and you want maybe more higher quality information and you want something that can be validated in Bloomberg. So we do have, let's say, Bloomberg as a news source and you can put your Binance chart next to it and have it co-mingle. And the cool thing is you can use AI mm. then to kind of create uh, like alerts and say, look, when this happens and Bloomberg mentions this, while this happens on Twitter, like the frequency of some project goes high, send me an email or swap a trade on Uniswap or do X, Y, Z um, kind of action. So in the future, we're integrating even more into not just receiving information, but being able to execute on that information as well. And that's, that's like the ultimate aim for us at Alpha Day to be like, from start to finish, like the entire experience in in Alpha Day. Mm -hmm. No, it totally makes yeah. sense. Okay, I I think I need to spend more time 
this alpha day obviously maybe i can simplify my stuff um nice nice um <clears throat> so is there anything else you would like to point out about alpha day or can i ask a little bit broader question around crypto or space in general uh no go for it cool i basically because you know you are uh so you are in a space for a long time um and because of the nature of alpha day uh, you get connected with a lot of interesting you know projects and infrastructure projects as well as information social networks and others uh what are some of the interesting and exciting projects for you which are now in in our space in web3 space yeah i mean there's so much going on that i mean that's what i'm enjoying the most that there's so many different angles of innovation there is like the classics like stuff happening in defi stuff happening in nfts and not just uh, like the basic like point one version we saw with just like jpegs and that kind of thing but more like like modular nfts like i think you guys touched it on a previous podcast episode like there's so much different things you can do as building blocks using these different fungible and non-fungible tokens so there's that whole aspect happening there's a whole everything happening in DeFi, which me personally i was very interested in the last three four years because it was amazing to be able to like take it eth stake it and then put it on on the other platforms all permissions without asking for permission without having to wait for bank transfer confirmation without needing to do any kyc checks like that process even though yes sometimes you do pay 10 20 dollars transaction fee but the overall experience for me was so incredible that i i was always really excited about DeFi um kind of progress but for me i've been through at least two different hype cycles since 2016 and what's always the most exciting to look forward to are the narratives that are completely new and novel that we can't foresee from now. So if you think like three years ago, we did not really have that NFT mania. We had crypto kitties, mm-hmm. but we didn't know what where this place could could lead us to. Before that, we had like basic decentralized exchanges, but we had no idea that we could lock money and lend and borrow from each other permissionlessly. So I'm just looking forward to that next uh, big narrative, seeing what's going to break out, what's going to be the driver in this next kind of bull market. So looking forward to what comes next. Yeah, so so, so do I actually, um, because uh, feeling, uh, having the feeling that you are, you know, interested observer and you're not really like dependent on it with your backs or trading skills is a great relief and you can really enjoy just watching what's happening um so let me ask you a last question um do you think we are in bull right now already or not yet um I mean, I think the bottom is behind us, right? If we think that Mm -hmm. Ethereum, let's say, reached as low as 800 for a week, uh, like a year ago, and now it's like 2,600. Do I think it's going to go back to even lower lows? I don't think so. Do I think, I still think it's a bit early for a bull market and that when you look at charts and you look at four year cycles, you look at what's happened before, if we have a bull market the next three months and we pick in the next three months, it would diverge from those nice slopes that we keep seeing, right? We do get every cycle diminishing returns. You're never going to get 50 X every time, but, yeah. and it's never going to be on, I think, fixed cycles, but me personally, I think we'll have a, like the peak of whatever we're entering now happen the end of this year or first half of next year. But like an important distinction, as you said, about not having to have bags, like I love being in the space, really not because of the Ethereum price, but because of you know what I get to build, the people I get to meet around the world, having these conversations about innovation around NFTs and DeFi. So 
yeah, I mean, I enjoy the bull market, but I also, I'm not emotionally attached to it. Uh, let's say like many other people who get into crypto and they only care about the price and that's not really being, that's not, you know, that's not investing your future in blockchain. If you want to invest your future in blockchain, forget about the charts and drawing lines on it. And that's just trading. That's a whole different thing that takes like half a decade, a decade to have any advantage over the market in terms of significant, like slow alpha. But blockchain, it's early enough that you get in now. You can become an expert in six months, 12 months. You can add value back to the space. Um, sorry, I've gone off in a bit of a tangent. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah. yeah. No, that was a very thoughtful answer, actually. Thank you for that. I, yeah, I'm not going to give my own prediction, but I am, uh, I am on, on the, I'm leaning on a side that we are not in a bull market yet. No? And, uh, okay. and we, I don't think we are going back to new lows, but I think we are going lower than we are now in the next year for sure um but i i also think it doesn't really matter that much um because i see a lot of interesting projects which could use a little bit more time to get ready for the bull run because there's then there is a lot of smoke and fog you know and a lot of noise and it's really hard to cut through so i would like to see the good projects and interesting projects you know get get a little bit better on the edge of things like usability and you know marketing and being able to explain what they are doing what problem they are solving before the noise starts because then it's going to be hard it's really hard to you know market or or sell anything like your product your token whatever uh if it has any value and and logic next to a coin which is promising thousand x because your promise is never that good <laughs> but you know it's these messages are right side by side so you know um it's better if you have a chance to build um, build up your name and uh and skills to cut through the noise before before the noise really comes that's such a cool. valid like i'm well, so yeah. happy to talk about the experience as well uh because like, I don't know if many people don't realize, but so far, last 10 years of blockchain development have been mostly about backend, about infrastructure, about being able to scale. And the front end and the UI UX has kind of suffered. Like, we have to admit to ourselves that today's yeah. crypto experience isn't ready for the next billion people. Like, our parents are, are used to the PayPal experience, and you try and get them to set up MetaMask, manage that, and try and stay away from the scams and the links and everything. Like that's not the experience that's suitable for the next uh, billion people. And if we're saying there's going to be a bull market and the next wave of adoption, we still have a long way to go to improve that experience. So I, I, I'm actually like, maybe there shouldn't be a bull market in the next one year, stretch it out a bit more, improve the fundamental value, you know, the, the kind of experience layer, just like web one was all about backend and building out the infrastructure and Web2 companies like Facebook came and built great experiences on top of that, and they became billion dollar companies. That's what we're gonna to have to go through as well in crypto, like that transition from backend progress to front end and experience progress. And I'm sure it is gonna happen, like with the number of designers coming on, product, product managers, people from the conventional world looking into crypto, loving it and spending their time on it. It's that's the next kind of wave of innovation as well, I think. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. And uh, I can say I'm very optimistic about it, uh, way more than I was like a year and a half ago, mostly because I'm, I'm meeting a lot of people who are, uh, you know, building in a space, but they're talking a lot, not about the backends and infrastructure stuff, but they're talking about the user experience. How can we make it better? How can you make it fun, you know, for people to join so they it would be like enjoyable experience, not like stressful thing um, to set up your three, you know, addresses and whatever. So yes, I totally agree. Well, you know, you you've heard it, people. Uh, wait for it, work on it, and um, yeah, be careful when you're if you are trading. 
you definitely go and check Alpha Day because it might make your day easier. Um, and uh, I will definitely, you know, um, put into show notes um, some comments which I gathered uh, and some some notes which I gathered from you know using Alpha Day myself. Thank you, Dennis. Um, I wish you good luck in your move to Dubai. And I hope uh, we'll have a chance to chat sometime in the future about, you know, what's new. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And for your listeners, we'd love your feedback as, like, from any kind of angle, anything you'd like want to add it there. We love uh, feedback. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, looking forward to talking to you. Uh, in the next maybe cycle and see how much we've progressed. Cool. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. And that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you want to connect with my guest or if you are interested in some of the points that were discussed today, just check the show notes for links. And don't forget to subscribe for future episodes. Also, if you are compelled, please leave a review. It helps others to find the podcast and you can surely share it with your friends to save them the trouble of discovery process. I definitely hope you would do that for me. One more thing, from January 2024, there is an option for the interested collectors to mint the episode or just the episode's art, which is always uniquely created by me for each guest and project. So go check the show notes to find out more. Until next time, keep it colorful and stay positive, friends. Ciao.